Hi everyone, so today we are glad to present you our report about Roma 4. So first of all, we would like to introduce uh, a bit the subject. So we first met Laurent Faure in, uh, in an exhibition in Elephant Panam in Paris. Uh, the name of the exhibition was, was uh, Lumière, the play of brilliance. And so we really saw that it was more interesting to speak about someone we, we met and about um, a work art that we have seen for real and not just pictures and videos. So that's why we choose to, to take Laurent Faure and to make this report today about him. So about his biography, uh, Laurent Fort is born in the 70s in uh, Nantes, in France. So he had made a school about audiovisual, and he moved quickly in, uh, in Italy after that, where it was uh, exhibited in different uh, galleries and also some shows like Maison et Objet and uh, uh, yeah, Maison et Objet. And then he moved a few years ago in uh, the US, in New York. So we had the chance a few weeks ago to meet him in Milan because he went uh, just for a few days here and so we had the chance to, to speak with him. And so when we were speaking with him, he explained to us uh, that he, he realized his passion for the light art when he was still working and studying in the audiovisual. So there he was trying to transform the materials. Uh, with the arrival of the light technology, he was like, oh wow, that's so cool, what can I do with such technologies? And so this is really the starting point of all his research about uh, the light arts. And at the same time, he decided to move in, um, in Italy. And so he had really, uh, a lot, he made really a lot of research about the lead to find the really good one, to find the perfect lead. Um, so after a few years in Italy, he, he really felt the pressure about the government taxes. So that's why he decided to move to the, to the US. Uh, during his trips, he felt the loneliness. And <coughs> He, he considered that to feel the loneliness, it was helping him during his work uh, to focus more on this work and to feel really the light as a medicine for his loneliness. So before making some light art project, he also made a different object as a designer. So for example, with uh, the silicon ball, uh, where he was experimenting with the silicon, and also with the vid posh, where he was uh, working on the hardness of the laser. So this is a complementary piece of design uh, for the entrance of the house. So now we are, will introduce his lighting art. Uh, he explained that his main inspiration is about natural, organic shape, about primitive elements like water, air, fire, and earth. He also he is also very interesting to involve the people to try to interact with his uh, spectator, with his, the visitor of the as works, because if he feels that nowadays in our world is all about image, and for him he don't really like artwork, art, lighting art when it's about just projection. So he tried to 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 feel the sensation, to speak to the physical physical body of the of the visitor with his earth. So the first one we want to speak about is Black Box Cosmos, it's the one we see in Paris, in the Campanam. Uh, this one is a very um, minimal, very clean shape with uh, this uh, black polish polycarbonate um, box. It's one watt lead, in all his uh, work it's just one watt lead. And uh, in this case, the projection is influenced by the movement of the people to cross the, cross the room. Uh, we can compare this, this uh, artwork with tw 2001 Odyssey of Space because there is this kind of luminescence tunnel that can be associated with this. There is like um, a lot of uh, shade nuance, gradient nuance, a lot of uh, image that can be created with our imagination. Uh, another work is Decroic. This one is a collection of two. There is iris and flamboyant. Uh, the difference is made by the colors. The iris one is more about sea, about habits, is like more blue, and the flamboyant is more about fire, a strong light with orange, yellow, and this kind of colors. It's made with a magnetic ball, which is 
under a sheet of dichroic materials and all this is on water. So there is three kind of movements. The water movement, the water of the ball and the water of, and the movement of the people who are around. Uh, this one is very interesting because we see the relationship with, between the architecture and the, um, the lighting art because in this case we have this projection who comes and play with the curve selling. So it's very interesting. In this case is also a view is about water with like um, this very, very natural and um, fluctuant image. There is also the move of the floor, the people, the vibration of the people who comes and make uh, the water move. And there, there is this uh, kind of move who happen on the projection. Uh, this one is kinetic polycarbonate sculpture. In this case, he introduced the movement of the, this very, very light and transparent sheet of polycarbonate who have been transformed by it like thermal farming. Here we can see that uh, in fact the projection is not just an image, we have the impression of a 3D sculpture light. And so it's very, very like we can stay and just see and, and, be, and feel very peaceful. So we can just see. Yeah. But okay, in us, there is something very important in this work is that you have always in mind the effect you want. But for obtain the what you want, he experiment a lot. He experiment, of course, on the lead, what she said. Like he try a lot to find the perfect one with the perfect shadow with a lot of detail inside. Uh, but he also try to experiment about the color of the lead, if it's warm or cold, in function of, for example, where there, when in his work there is a lot of color, he wants warm or cold. He experiment also about material, about reflecting deformation, transparencies, and things like this. And he explains that nowadays his two main um, uh, projects is about levitation and magnetic field. A magnetic field tries to transform it, to, to control it, but then he say, okay, no, in fact, it's more, more interesting if I let it free and because it's natural energy. In this case, it's interesting to see what is the dichroic materials. Um, in this case, it's here. The dichroic materials for Polaris have been transformed by each, and it, it has also been painted by black under. In this case, the, the colors are very, very bright, and the material seems to disappear into the dark. Another um, video about like colors and and it's about here Aurora Borealis. So it's like he explained us that everyone can have one Aurora Borealis in his room because everyone can see what he wants inside and feel in his body the sensation of his artwork. So just to see, it's also made with like here a uh, lamp. Ah, flexible. A flexible lamp, thanks. Flexible lamp, so there is this way the people can play with it because they can change the uh, inclination of the lamp and change the projection, the image, as they want. Okay, so for that one, the luminous uh, alchemy, here it's a bit more different from, the other, from his other work because actually it's a... Um, it's a lamp with the object, and so what is really interesting is to see that even when the, the lamp is it's turned off, you can still have a piece of art in your in your house because it's not um, it's not really disturbing if you don't have the light. It still you can still have a really nice object. So here also each object is made by hand, and he really wanted to keep all these asperities, like all the waves, all the holes inside it, to 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 keep to have this organic uh, feeling. So with Poesie Do, it's, uh, it's a special project as well. He um, invited the spectator to have an interaction with the lamp, uh, with the dropper, like every, um, Each. every every drop of water, it's really different. And so it's making the, the lamp and, the, and the, the projection really different from another one. It's always changing, it's always moving. 
So for the light on canvas, that it's writing on the name, so he just took a canvas and he put a light on it. But what is really interesting here is to see the difference between the size of the sheet paper, which was 17 by 17, and the projection, uh, which is really, really huge on the, on the canvas. So as you notice, also he used a dichroic uh, paper to, having, uh, to have this kind of psychedelic uh, effect, but also uh, dichroic uh, filter. filter on the, on the lead. So here, this is Prometheus. So this is the lamp uh, that he made, which was inspiring by the myth of Prometheus. Uh, the Titans who stole the fire from, from Zeus to give it to the man. So that's how we discover the fire. Um, so what is really interesting here is to see that by all the different orientation of the lamp, you can really choose if you want to have a narrow or a wide uh, reflection on the wall. So for example, here, if you incline it like that, you will have a bigger uh, reflection. So we stable lamp. So this is the last uh, artwork we will show you today. Uh, so this is a lamp uh, made with different materials. So the, there is different lamp. So it's making by gold, silver, or with a dichroic filling. So for example, with a gold one, we have a gold reflection. With a silver one, a silver reflection. And what is also really interesting is to see that you can fold the paper as you want to really create the lamp that you want, but also to have and to play around with, uh, with the reflection on the wall. And again, uh, Laurent Fort has invited the viewer to, to interact with the lamp. Okay, so there is some of his exhibitions, the main. Uh, like what we say, there is one of Elephant Panam in Paris we see. There is also like in Salonier del Mobile, uh, Maison et Objet in Paris, and the Biwako Biennale of Japan. It will expose also in September 2017 in Paris, in France, in Pau. Uh, he, when we meet him, we try to have a conversation about his collaboration, inspiration, and he said that, of course, he has a lot of inspiration, like every artist. The two men can be Olaf Eliasson and James Jurel. It's meant us that for him, lighting art is not only about artificial light but also about natural light. Because for him, like he found his inspiration to the nature and in the natural light. So for him, it's obvious that natural light is very important. So we can conclude and say that. Uh, Laurent Ford has embraced this new life, the lighting art, and he's, he explained us it's with no regret because he feels very more free, very more peaceful into his life, but also into his passion. And he, he continually like looking out and try to find new inspiration in everything he see. And thank you very much.